Hello, 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 hello. It's 11.53. It is 11.53 p.m. a.m. In the morning. On Wednesday the 4th of September. My name's Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So my website is jasonnewland.com and you may think to yourself, hmm, why would I want to go to his website? I haven't got, <laughs> I've got no idea. I wouldn't bother. <laughs> There's no point. Now, actually, actually, I've been working on the website quite a lot the last few weeks, a couple of weeks, yeah, probably the last month, actually. I don't know. I lose track. But I have now uploaded so that you can download. You Basically, I've got it so you can download... Eventually, you'll be able to download every single recording that I've produced. Regardless of what they are. Whether it's to let me bore you to sleep. Sleepy boring objects. Uh, Jason's bedtime story time. Relax and sleep hypnosis daily. Deep sleep whisper hypnosis. Relaxation. Oh, I lose track anxiety and panic attack one so yeah there's quite a few stop smoking and I think that's it there might be more so I've done quite a few I've made them available and they're on the website literally just the first page if you scroll down from where there's the list of the latest recordings scroll down on the first page and then there's you basically click on whichever one you want and then it will come up and it will list all the recordings. You can click on whichever recording you want and a page will come up and it will just say this is, there are four different types of recording on this recording or whatever. Download free, without music, music, five hours and ten hours. It's uh, You can download it as a zip file, so all four recordings at the same time. There's also a link where you can click on to find out, if you don't know how to, how to download, how, how to open the zip file when you receive it. Depending on if it's a laptop or a phone, a tablet. I don't know what other media there would be. Other sort of, not media, tools. Yeah, anyway. So I've now got one, th I think it's about 1,080 of the Let Me Boy to Sleep recordings. Now, the first thousand, pretty much, are just the m recording without music. Because uh, I lost a lot of recordings last year. But everything over a thousand, over the thousand mark, uh, is it's pretty. It's basically all four. There's a few where there's like only three, or there's a few where there's nothing, because I've lost those recordings altogether. But generally, um, all the new recordings, or the most updated ones, will be all four recordings. Although I also am now. God, this is, I I, feel, I want to tell you this stuff, but I want to also. I don't, I don't want to get too bogged down with this in case you fall asleep listening because I have some messages to read out and some thank yous to say. So, ooh, uh, also really, really important stuff. Well, not important, but I do have a Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group. It's only, it's very specifically for those of you, those of you who listen 
to my recordings or watch my videos, whatever. Those people that really like what I do. It's not it's not just there for anyone to join for the sake of it. It's it's really just to have a small community. There's 182 or 183 people, uh, and it's it's just there for people that regularly listen, regular listeners of my recordings. And as it's a private group, but you can join and you'll be accepted. I mean, even, even if you don't listen to the recordings, but there'd be no point and you wouldn't hear this message anyway, would you, if you're not listening? Oh, but it's, it's a good place. You get to, you can get to meet other people that are also, um, regular listeners and I don't know, really. Just, I'm trying to think, it's probably no benefit to joining, but there might be. I'm not really selling it, am I? Anyway, the reason I mentioned the that group is because I just got, I was having a, such a lovely message. In fact, I got a couple of lovely messages, but there's, um, where is it? Right, well, first of all, actually, I'm going to go back to my group. So I want to say thank you to Mike for your part for your your kind PayPal gift. This was a couple of days ago, but I I've not made any recordings since Friday. It's now Wednesday. So I want to say thank you. And uh it really helped actually because it enabled me yesterday to get some groceries because I'm not sure if I mentioned it in my podcast but the groceries I got last week, the toilet roll was missing. The, someone, someone nicked the toilet roll. They stole my toilet roll off my doorstep. So and it was a big pack. So I'd, I literally was running out. I had, I had none left. Uh, the, the, the local, the petrol station didn't have none. They had kitchen roll, but I just find that's a little bit too rough on my bum. So. More information than you needed, probably. So, thanks, Mike. You've... I don't know how this probably sounds word. You've been... You've helped me to clean my... <laughs> Just thank you. I probably won't say any more, because... Is... You've helped me to be kind to my bum. Uh, but gentle, gentle toilet roll, rather than... Because I don't... I like to... Do we need... To, I don't need to talk about toilet roll, do I? I'll move on. <laughs> uh, right. Oh, also, if you do join the Jason Newlands Boring Group, I do post uh, videos on there and messages and comments and stuff that I don't post anywhere else. So it's... Um, a little videos and pictures of Vinny and stuff like that. <sighs> Also, I want to say a big thank you to Kathleen for the kind gift. Now, Kathleen asked me my, for my address a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. Uh, she wanted to send me something. So I said, oh, okay, cool. More lingerie. So, um, so Kathleen's from Australia. And she sent me a gift and it was like had to write down what was inside it and everything. I guess that's how it is. And blimey, $26.80 postage. That's a lot of postage. That's six, I just, just noticed that. Wow. That's a lot of money. I mean, I know Australian dollars about... I think you get two pound per dollar. So, but it's still half of 26. 13 pound 40 for postage. That's a lot. I just think that's a lot of money. Um, thank you. Uh, basically, what Kathleen sent me is a handmade, uh, like, jumper for Vinny. I need to get a little picture of him wearing it, but he won't let me near him. <laughs> He's uh, he's very temperamental. This one, but it's uh, black and it's cute and it's uh, proper wool. And I took him out in it the other day, 
he was not happy. <laughs> he was, <laughs> I think we should have got a pink one with big yellow dots and uh, I want to get in one now. I want to get one for the winter, like for rain. So I get a, like a rain mac for him with a little hood. And then at Christmas, I want to get him some antlers. Um, I don't know. I just I just have the urge to go all out with him now. So if anybody wants to send uh, stuff for me to dress Vinny up to embarrass him, I guess, you know, like a little dress, a little Cinderella dress or something like that. I think it'd be brilliant. And you could have a little wand. Wow. Him dressed as a reindeer. It'd be, it'd be great. Uh, Halloween. Get a Halloween costume because we've got Halloween coming up soon. I don't know why I had to say the word Halloween four times within two sentences. But Halloween, 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 Halloween. So thank you, Kathleen. That's very, very lovely. Very thoughtful. And um, I probably loved it a little bit more than Vinny because he's, he, he <laughs> I don't know. It was just weird. He's not used to it. That's all. But I think he'll appreciate it when it's cold because it's still quite warm at the moment here. Um, but guaranteed when it's icy outside, I think you'll definitely appreciate having that jumper on in fact he probably asked me to put it on him that is i mean i said like do you want to wear that he said you wear it it's so lovely you wear it and he's rude but he doesn't realize he obviously doesn't need it now because it's hot i mean yesterday i went out in the morning and about oh, half eight eight quarter past eight half eight raining it wasn't warm. It was raining. I had my raincoat on. My glasses were getting all wet. I was getting wet. But not wet enough to... Not wet enough to really moan too much about it. Not wet enough to come home and write a poem about it. But I was very much... Like, okay, fair enough. It's September. I don't mind. I, the weather doesn't bother me, really. I mean, it gives me something to moan about and talk about, and that's what being English is all about, moaning about the weather, or talking about the weather. You're quite lucky that that's not all I talk about, because that very likely could be, if I didn't have such a <laughs> exciting life. I <laughs> oh, I can't even say that about laughing. So... Another thing is, I'm doing another question and answer Q&A Friday, because coming Friday. So if you have any more, any questions, Nicole has just asked put two. That's good. So thank you. If you've got any questions for Friday, please go to Jason Newlands Boring Group and please post your questions. I mean, I can't believe really that it's been... I've done 22 recordings of the Q&A Friday. It was only a one-off, just for a laugh. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is... Because you may be wondering, like, how, oh, why, where have I been? Because, you know, I went from doing a recording every day to, to not doing any at all for a while. Uh, probably the back end of last year due to stuff that happened and then I kind of got back into it and then I kind of slowed down a bit and it, there's nothing going on necessarily I have a bit of a bad stomach but other than that I'm I'm okay but I've been I've been I sound I really sound common today I really are oh, oh, I've been all right I've just been doing this stuff in it I feel like I'm talking like that I need to I've forgotten to put on my posh accent. This is how I normally sound, isn't it? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. So, um, uh, hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's two things I've been doing. Although, I don't know, I've... 
to be, oh, I think turning 54 was a little bit of a shock to the system, a little bit, last week. Because it's literally one week and two days since I turned 54. And it was an up and down emotional situation. I'm not quite sure how to explain it, but it was just... Yeah, I just... Hmm. Yeah, I, d I don't... I'm kind of not sure how I feel about it, because I'm getting older. Oh, we're all getting older, it's just normal, and... I don't... don't you don't want to be negative about it, it's... If anything, I'm in a much better place than I've been... Than I was when I was in my 20s, when I was physically healthy and young and virile and had all my hair instead of half of other people's hair um but it, you know so and i was slim although i didn't like being slim that's the ironic thing about it isn't it with that i don't know if irony is the right word but i was so self-conscious about my body more than i am now 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 i'm just fat but back then, or chunky, I'm chunky now, I'm chunky, but back then I was really, really, to me I was skinny, didn't like being skinny, but I think to other people I would have just been slim, they probably, I, you know, I remember I had a massage, because I've had this ongoing back issue, which now I, I didn't know it was arthritis, but it took a long time to get to the point where it was it was kind of bad with my lower back. And it really kind of kicked in around the late 90s. I noticed it probably about 97, 98. Doing physical work was, I've, I noticed a little bit more in my lower back. Like, oh, that's hurting a bit. Uh, if I sat on the floor, things like that, it's like, oh. So I was stretching and, you know, trying to sort of stretch it out, really. Almost like trying to unknot my back. And there was a reason why I started telling you this. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I went for a massage. And there's a whole story for this one, but not, not, not in a way that you might think. Um, nothing weird or rude but just I had this massage and I said she said well can you take the towel off I had um, the towel was over I don't know I might have had me underpants on or the towel was over my midsection but there was another towel over my body and I was so embarrassed and I was saying oh I'm just so from my back when I was lying on my back, I didn't mind so much, but lying down on my back, on my back, and to see my tummy, because I was so slim, I felt, and she said, no, yeah, you're slim, but, but you're not skinny, and I just started, I couldn't, it's almost like I had uh, a, a, a very, very mild form of body dysmorphia, very, 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 I probably shouldn't call it that. But, you know, I wasn't really seeing myself the way other people were seeing me. But then do any of us. I mean, I don't see myself as this sex god, but I know lots of people do. And <laughs> That's why I don't wear shorts, because I don't wanna I don't wanna like cause traffic jams. Because my sex, my, my sex are so leggy, my legs are so sexy. That's what I was meant to, meant to say. Yeah. Oh, there's a whole new, there's a whole story about that, having that massage. But I'll tell you another time. Just about the place I went to. Uh, it was a naturist place. I didn't know what a na I didn't know anything about naturism. I thought naturism was like lions and forests and green grass and butterflies I thought that's what naturism was you know if you're a naturist me too I love caterpillars 
it, it yeah it's it's not quite what people mean or oh, i didn't know that though this was as i said late 90s and anyway so i'll talk about that another time i know you want to hear about it now don't you tell us about the naturist club you went to by accident and you were looking around in your dressing gown waiting for a massage and you're wondering why everyone was completely naked <laughs> it was very strange but it wasn't compulsory so even though you could you know it was a naturist health spa basically that's what it was and they had a jacuzzi they had sauna they might have even have no didn't have a weights room but they had it was health you know so uh oh yeah an ice I think they might have had a big swimming pool. I know, probably not. Yeah, but it was nice. It was really, really, really nice place. I didn't really know what was in it. Above it was a pool table. Put a pool club, I think. Or a snooker club. And so, yeah, I mean... I'm trying to think what the relevance of this was. So, basically, yeah, I have questions q and a friday on why how did i get how i'm talking about my back but why am i talking about my back i don't know i genuinely cannot what was i looking at q and a friday so yeah uh if you've got any questions just uh join the Q&A Friday and the Jason Newland's Boring Group on Facebook and you can ask me a question. If you're not on Facebook at all, which some people aren't, I know people that aren't on Facebook, so, and you want to get a question to me, you can send me a question. <clears throat> I am all also on, I'm on Twitter as well. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram, and you can send me, you can go to my website, jasonnewland.com, and send me a message on there, if you want to. So there's quite a few different ways you can send me a message, but uh, the easiest way would be probably just to go to, just join the Facebook group, if you're a regular listener. Vinny's chomping away on his bone. Right. So I need to... Oh. Let me have a look. So I've got a message here I want to read out. On... Facebook. Facebook, where are you? My Facebook. Oh, right, okay, it's the app, isn't it? So, the newest member is to the Jason Newlands Boring Group is Nicole. So, thank you for joining. I'm going to read you out the message because... Uh, not all of it, just read you out some of it, because it's such lovely words. Um, this is what Nicole wrote, because we posted, or Molly posted, let's welcome a new member. And uh, I've been listening to Let Me Boy to Sleep for over six years now, and have been able to depend on your podcast to get me through some very hard times. Um, my son also... Now, it says, oh, there's personal stuff, but I won't read that out because you need to become a member if you wanted to see that stuff. Um, my son also loves your podcast and it helps him to fall asleep too. I personally love the 10 hour versions of Let Me Boy to Sleep. Keeps me awake, keeps me awake all night. <laughs> no, keeps me asleep, keeps me asleep all night. And when I wake up in the morning, I always give myself a little extra time to listen to the let go, relax completely, be kind to yourself. 
Um, so that's part of the the 10 hour bit is there's winding down, there's counting down, there's positive suggestions, affirmations and things like that, which I don't normally talk about, but it's, it's in each recording, five hour and 10 hour ones. Uh, so yeah, it's become a sort of a meditation for me to relax and begin my day on a positive note. Thanks for all the, the all of your hard work, Jason Newland, hypnotist. Even though I'm okay, so I won't read the rest of that. But thank you very much, Nicole. I did read the whole of it. I'm just not going to read that out to the general public um, unless they're actually in the group. Because that's kind of the point of the group to have, you know, a degree of privacy. Although I do talk about myself, you know, generally. So the two things that I've been doing, the two things that I've been doing is working on a website. And also, and I think I, I might have mentioned this. I don't know. I've been working on the. I've got Spreaker again. Well, I've had Spreaker. I've never, I never give up, gave Spreaker up, but I've rejoined it. Like, paid for subscription, and I've been working on the podcast and started separating the podcasts up again, like they used to be. So I still got the main podcast, and I still got the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast which are on SoundCloud, but the other podcasts, which are uh, the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis, all the ones that I mentioned at the beginning, you know, the Relax and Sleep Hypnosis Daily, Jason's Bedtime Story Time, Sleepy Boring Objects, Stop Smoking Hypnosis, Hypnosis for anxiety and panic attacks. I'm trying to think. That sounds like all of them to me. There might be more. The Let Me Boy to Sleep, as I said, is still on SoundCloud. Now, on Spreaker, I am not allowed to post music. So, what I've done is I've created five and ten hour versions and it's different uh, different um, I don't know what you want to call it so the first recording you know you have to say the recording lasts half an hour or an hour and then the next five hours will be the same kind the same kind of thing as what I do with the music um, but I think some of those are different recordings diff different stuff so there's counting down there's affirmations there's uh, body scan and stuff like that but it's all with, without music so that's what I've done I've been creating versions of the podcasts without music and uploading them to the Spreaker podcast. Now, I think I'm at about 66 on the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis. So, there's a lot to do. A huge amount to do. But, I'm getting... It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty good getting... That nearly... Yeah... I've only really had it all like been going for the last few days. So I've got it's working its way up to about a thousand plays a day or downloads a day with uh, different podcasts. And still got the other podcasts as well. So yeah, so I'm gonna continue with that. That's gonna take me probably till the end of the year. And also I'm still uploading the archives of Let Me Boy to Sleep onto YouTube. So I've now got 200 recordings on YouTube of the Let Me Boy to Sleep. It's, I've got, I think I've got nearly 2,000 recordings altogether, like videos on there. Blimey. 
So I'm trying to upload 10 new 10 a day. So instead of like putting too much up, so 10, so tomorrow I'll do 201 to 210. But I also upload video version of the new podcasts, like this one will be uploaded. So yeah, there is, and they're all without music on YouTube again as well because of copyright issues even though the music I use is copyright free and they're only like the length the full length there's no 5 or 10 hour versions on YouTube although I may look at doing that in the future um, once I've uploaded everything I might go and start making five and ten hour ones without music so there'll be a lot to choose from on my youtube channel it just seems like a, a nice option for people to have you know because i accidentally did that on uh, i shared a podcast onto youtube where it just downloaded the pod or uploaded the podcast from that podcast the, the podcast episodes and I didn't realize it uploaded the ones with five hours ten hours and I suddenly saw this massive surge in video views like you know over a thousand video views in a in a day it's like what and I realised that people were listening to the 10 hour ones and the 5 hour ones but they those ones had music in the background so I had to delete those before I got sort of kind of copyright strike but people were listening to them or watching the videos so the only problem is with YouTube even if they allowed it it might stop me from ever being able to monetize the YouTube channel in the future. I can't. I can't monetize it anyway um, because I've got. An, I haven't got enough hours. I've got enough hours. I haven't got enough. Yeah, no, I haven't got enough hours. And plus, I wouldn't monetize it now anyway, even if I could. So I've got enough um, subscribers. I've got one thousand and three hundred and. 76 I think you only need a thousand subscribers in order to you know I think it's a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours and I've got 3,640 watch hours something like that in the last uh, year Blimey, I think that's everything. <laughs> I've covered everything that I needed to cover. That's just the introduction, man. What's going on, man? Uh, yeah, so... <clears throat> What's that? I don't know what it is. Just looking at my phone. So, yeah... Riri, if you're listening, thank you for your for adding me on TikTok or for following me on TikTok. So I'm not really a to be fair, I'm not really a big tick 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 TikToker. Tick TikToker? TikToker, is that what it's called? Because if I'm honest, I don't know how it all works. I kept away from TikTok purposefully and well, really, because I thought it was for, I thought it was for like really, really, really young people, and I didn't want to infringe upon their space. Like Facebook was for really young people, wasn't it, to start with? Well, young, young adults or whatever. And then it kind of got took over by uh, older people. Mind you, those young people back then will now be middle aged anyway. 
but TikTok, it seemed to be focused at children. But now I see adverts on TV and they're trying to promote buying stuff on there and there's, it's, there's a lot of adults on there now. So I posted some a couple of singing videos, but what I might do is look into it and start posting some maybe some videos you know some of the stuff that I the podcasts that I do maybe try and promote because I don't have really an age group when it comes to these podcasts the, these let me boy to sleep are listened to by people of all ages all cultures all nationalities all sexes it's like I, there's I don't really seem to have a particular category I don't know if that's the right word it's just people who like what I do listen and those that don't don't it, it's just it's really that simple I think I don't because I'm not I suppose you know if if I was talking about boxing all the time which some people may think I do but if you know then I'd get a boxing audience or if I was talking, which I try, I will try not to, but that does remind me what I want to talk about today. The Open University, I got my first book through, well in fact the only book I think, I got the book through for the my module, which is lasts the year, and I think this is one book for the year. Mm, mm, mm. Smells lovely. That smell. I tell you what, if the world does go the way it's going, it's gonna. I'm gonna miss. You know, I'm talking about like maybe being digital, and books, maybe not being around anymore. I'm gonna miss that smell, because even I mean, it, old books don't have that. They have a different kind of smell, I guess, but a fresh book that hasn't really been opened and the air hasn't got to the pages. It's a certain smell. I can't really... And it might just be ink, but I think it's more than that. It's the smell of... The smell of opportunity. <laughs> the smell of knowledge. I don't know. It just smells nice. So I got that through two days ago, I think, or was it? No, Monday, I think. Yeah, which was two days ago. So I got it through on Monday and it was on my doorstep. So I'm glad that I opened the door and it was still there. I didn't even think like what it was like. I was like, what is this? Why, you know, I don't know what it is. It was a flat parcel. So something flats inside. I hadn't ordered a book. I, mean, I haven't ordered a book for years. Since this is the last time I ordered a book from Amazon. So I got no idea. of like, well, I haven't ordered anything. And then I, I saw on the outside of it, it was OU, the Open University. And I thought, oh. It's my book. It's my book. My course book. And it was. Oh, it really was. And it's making it a little bit realer now. A little bit realer. A bit, a little bit more. This is really going to happen. I am definitely. All all things <laughs> all things going well. I will be starting my second degree course in about a month's time beginning of October and it's the first module it's the first year and then I'll have five more years after that and I will be I will have undergraduate degree in psychology and my my aim apart from to still be alive when I'm 60 still be around doing these weird podcasts Imagine what it'll be like in six years. 
Because I've already done six years, haven't I? Yeah, I've already been doing it for six years. So imagine if, well, six and a half now, I guess. So imagine another six years. It might be completely different. I might sound completely different. I might be, Hi, everybody. It's Jason again. I, who knows? We don't know. That might be how I'll talk then. I might have a French accent for some reason. You don't know, dear. It could it could happen. So, ah, uh, I've been thinking about it though because the one one of my main aims, other than because I'm doing the degree for fun. It really is not a career move for me. There is no career. I have no career. Um. The closest thing to a career I had, kind of, I suppose, when I was in insurance, I was doing quite well as a salesperson. But you know, I didn't move up the ladder. Although I potentially might have been able to had I not got ill. So that was kind of, I mean, uh, that's the the main job I did for quite a long time. Yeah, that was my main job for about six years, seven years, six or seven years, eight, I don't know, until 2013, that was the last job I had, but I guess really from a career perspective or career minded, I would say probably the counselling, when I, when I finished the, my college degree, I was setting out to have a a career as a counsellor. That was the aim. That was the aim of starting the course. I didn't do it for fun. I did it. There was multiple reasons, I guess, why I did it. You know, self-discovery. To prove myself wrong. To prove that I could do it because I didn't believe I could. And probably to prove other people that I could do it. Most of all me, I guess. To not have to work for three years. I quite like the idea of that in the sense of it took the pressure off because I'd been unwell, but not have to be unemployed. You know, so I could be I could be at university for three years not have to answer to anyone, not have to look for a job, anything like that. I had a little part-time job, but ultimately I could just spend my time being a student, which I did, kind of. Well, I was a student, but I didn't didn't really live the student lifestyle because I was old, even then. Well, at least I felt old. I wasn't old, but I wasn't 18. I was 37 when I started my degree course and I never went to any student bar, I never went to any student events, it was, it was poor showing really, it was, I think I'd have enjoyed myself more if I'd have done it in my 20s or early 20s, I'd have had a blast, but then I don't know Well, first of all, I don't know if... Well, I wouldn't have got on a course to start with because I left school with no qualifications. And secondly... Although I did apply to do it. I did apply to... I wanted to do a psychology degree when I was living in London back in probably 95. 95? Maybe 97. I lose track. I really do lose track of time. So I don't remember everything. I really don't. But it was about 95 time. And I applied. Maybe it was 97. But I applied to do a degree at East London University. And they said. Or was it East Ham University? I think it was East London. Now, I wasn't allowed to do a degree course because I had no qualifications, but I was accepted onto an access course, 
which lasted for I think a year or maybe two years and at the end of that I'd then be accepted providing I passed you know did everything I was supposed to do I'd be accepted onto a degree course and I didn't continue I'm not sure why I'm not sure why but I attempted I started the access course twice two different times maybe that's why maybe 97 and 95 or 93 even I don't know but I didn't continue I also started the open university degree course back in the late 90s and it was free back then free it's now what, three grand a year so it you know it's it was absolutely free i started the module and i just quit i quit because i couldn't just couldn't um not i couldn't do it but i just just the pressure or whatever just couldn't didn't want to do it or changed my mind or wasn't didn't believe I could do it probably more like and then I applied a couple of times one was after I finished my university I applied to do open university course degree course this time I paid but it was really it wasn't a lot of money you know it was a lot less than what it is now probably uh, maybe a thousand pound a year something like that and I did a direct debit and I got ill um, because of where I was working uh, this is before I'd been diagnosed of, with uh, bipolar so I didn't know I knew I was moody I knew that uh, everyone knew I was moody but I just didn't didn't I just didn't think it was anything other than just being moody um, but anyway, I so I cancelled that, and they allowed me to cancel it. And then I so I've done that. I did that about two times. Cancelled the payments after getting starting the course, and then I applied to do the course a few years back, and it was the about two thousand uh, or nine no two. 2019 if you remember what happened in 2020 so I'm quite I'm quite happy I didn't do that in the end because it would have been it was a you know it's quite a difficult period for a lot of people so and um, so yeah I've applied I literally to get to doing this degree so I started and stopped two access courses in order for me to do the psychology degree but now I've got a degree I don't need to do that to do it I can do the second degree Open University I've started one two three times and then applied another two times so I've started and stopped three times and this is the final time but but this this time I get financing so it was difficult. Even a thousand pound a year was a bit too much to pay out because I was working. I didn't. I wasn't earning much money. I was doing the counselling part time, and I was working part time on a the reception of this charity, and my rent was really a lot. One hundred and twenty five pound a week for this room. So it was, it was a. I just couldn't really afford it and it was everything was getting a bit everything kind of happened all at the same time so I pulled out of that but now I think back then I was thinking of it as like a career a career move and the pressure of that was maybe well I had a lot going on now it's just for fun. You know, I'm 54 now. 
I'll be 60 when the degree is finished and then seven years later I'll be retired it's that is just I mean by the way uh, if there's any ladies out there that, that are <laughs> they're interested in having a relationship with with me. Get get in contact because I don't know how much longer I've got. <laughs> Hurry up, blimey! Retired at sixty seven. It was sixty five when I left school. In fact, there was a time I think when it was sixty for men and fifty five for women. Then it moved up for fifty five for women. No, it didn't go up to 60 for women and 65 for men. So I think when my granddad retired, which was about the same time I was born, he retired, yeah, because I was born 1970, he retired in, he retired in 1970 because, or maybe he retired 1971. Yeah, because he turned 80 in 1991. So, yeah, so he retired in 1971 because um, when we, my, yeah, my granddad helped my dad out uh, with his pension, with my dad's granddad's pension money. He helped my dad out, apparently, that's what my nan said. And he paid it back, but he helped him out. So he, he just retired, my granddad, at 60. So back then, 60 was the retirement age. Now it's 67. So imagine what it's going to be in 200 years' time. 72? 73? 80? But then in 200 years' time, we might all live to be a 1,000. Just replace the body parts that need replacing. Wow. I want that now. I, I really, that's one of my little hopes. That the longevity or the long, the long life that's going to happen with new technology. I'm hoping that that happens in time for me to benefit from it so that if there comes a time when I need a new whatever it is a new a new whatever it is then it'll just I'll just go and get it and it'll be fine and that'll be like a, a I guess a financial expen expense you know to do it but other than that that perhaps will be the only barrier I'd even consider being an, an experimental piggy if they wanted, you know? If I was in a position, so... I don't know, if they suddenly they they said, well, we can make you taller. But, you know, there's a 99% certainty that it's going to be fine. 1% chance that it won't be so good. And you, you'll end up with a limp. But we have to... We need to test it on humans because... Um, Giraffes, it's just not not fair on them to have to test it on giraffes. <laughs> they don't do very well with limps. I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I I I'd, I'd go for it. Like yeah, if it make I don't want to be super tall. I don't want to be like nine foot tall because that's too tall. Mind you, if I was nine foot tall, I'd be the right weight. <laughs> so that would be good. But I'd, I'd, be, I'd still be fat, probably. Yeah, I think probably... I always like the idea of being around sort of 6'6". Six, six, which is a lot taller than me. I'm 5'8". So 6'6 six, six would be, wow. Just to be able to look down on people. Just to be able to look at the tops of people's heads. And the only know I can only do that with kids. Anyone over the age of about ten, and they're usually taller than me or as tall as me. 
you know I, I'm not a, I'm not a tall tall person I'm not like mini I'm not tiny but I'm not not very tall and I don't want to look down on people you know heads necessarily but it must be nice to be super tall maybe a part I don't know I've never been I mean I was tall once you're tall depending on who's around you aren't you when I was on the Wizard of Oz set back in 1949 or whatever I remember yeah I was I felt quite tall there now and then I mean even Dorothy was short I know she was taller than me but most of the other people the Tin Man was taller I didn't like that he had high heel boots on he did. And the straw man. It was just straw, that hat. Take the hat off. He was about five inches shorter. And you know what? Take the ears off of the uh, the cowardly lion. Without the ears and the mane, a lot shorter. You know, it's always, they've always like got these little tricks to make themselves taller. I haven't got anything other than a Mohican. If I did a Mohican... I used to have spiky hair. I think part of that was so that I could be taller. It didn't work. So, the thing is, you could join a circus, and that's what I used to think. Join a circus, and I'll be the tallest one there. But it depends, because a circus has lots of different people, don't they? You know, I'm thinking about the old-fashioned circuses that had very small people and a very, very large people. And bearded octopuses or whatever. <sighs> so yeah, I oh so yeah, I've got my book through anyway. The book for the Open University is called "An Introduction to Childhood and Youth Studies and Psychology." Edited by Victoria Cooper and Mimi Tatlow Gelden. So this, although, to be fair, this is the light on. I can't really see the writing very well. We've always got feedback from that um ours or a Oh. Right, something I need to do before this starts. Really, if I can, I need to get myself. My, I get, need to get my eyes tested because my eyesight has deteriorated, unfortunately. And so I need to get my eyes tested, get some new glasses. But this time, I'm going to get separate glasses for reading. Uh, I'm not, I can't be wearing like bivocals or bifocals or whatever they're called because it's just the little bit for reading is too small. I literally, it's right at the bottom and I've got like, you know, it makes the ground further away and it uh, makes me feel taller, but other than that, but it's an optical lie. So I'll need to get some, and it doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what the frames are. I can get the cheapest, rubbish, rubbishiest um, frames for reading because I don't. I'll only be reading indoors, so it doesn't matter what they look like. But as far as my out going out glasses or my day to day glasses, I'm going to need to get some decent frames. These ones are pretty much worn out now but I do need actor light because my eyes are affected by the light so these go dark it like, like sunglasses they're not really sunglasses but they do go dark and it's I'm also gonna sort of try and see if I can get some glasses for screen separate glasses for looking at a computer as well because I do spend quite a lot of time looking at a computer screen and 
you know, the, the, not the dentist, the optician said to me that I might have the, the beginnings of macro degeneration, which is hereditary in my family. So my nan went blind with it and my dad's got it as well. He's, I'm not sure how his vision is, but his eyes get bad, you know, like really dry or stuff like that. He has to have eye drops and stuff. So I'm not sure how his vision is. And he never used to wear glasses, bearing in mind. My nan's wore glasses. Uh, she didn't used to wear glasses, but she's worn them all the time that I've known her. Or that I knew her. But she didn't wear them in the early days. So when she was in her 20s or 30s, probably, she didn't wear glasses. I've only known her since she was... Uh, She's probably okay. Let's work it out. She was about ninety. She ninety five when she left, and that was two thousand and f let's say ninety four, just for the sake of the the year. She left in two thousand and fourteen, and so. 90 years, so 2014, 50, so what, oh, I, want, I need to go back 90 years, okay, 90, 2014 would be, no, 2000, 2014, 1934, 24, 1924. Um, she was 17 in 1939, I know that much. Because she married my granddad. So let's say th she was born in 1924, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Yeah, so she was, she was 96. So let's say... She was born in 1932. 42, 52, 62, 70. She's 30, 38 when I was born. Does that make sense? 30, yeah, because my dad... No. No, surely not. 32, 42, 52... 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. So it's 38. That doesn't make sense, which means she would have been 20. See, my dad was 26 when I was born. This math, this isn't working out for me. He was 26 when I was born. So she was 38. 26. 26. She was born in 24. 34. 44. 54. He was born in 1945 or 1946. Yeah, he was born in 46. 46? Yeah, he was born in 1946. She was born in 24. So she was 22 when he was born. 22. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, so basically just after the war. Maybe she was 16 when she married my granddad then. She was 22 when she had him. And then... I know obviously the months could be different as well. Huh. 22, 26. So she was 26 when he was born. 
add another 26 because he was 26 when I was born. So it's more than 26, 40, 26, 46, 52. She was 52 when I was born. Yeah, okay, fair enough. She was 52. So, yeah, she was wearing glasses. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm trying to work this out. Because my dad's 78 now. He'll be 79 next year. So... So yeah, she was 96. Uh, something like that. I lose track. But yeah, so she, she wore glasses. She didn't wear them when she was my age. I mean, I, I started wearing glasses when I was at school to start with because uh, I had a lazy eye. Is it called a stigma or whatever it's called? And... I had to wear a patch and I had to do these exercises with a pencil and follow the things. The problem is I used the, <laughs> used the wrong eye. Uh, I used the wrong pencil. And the so I was wearing glasses. I remember that was weird, going to school with glasses on and everyone laughing at me. Brilliant. Yeah, it definitely was a stigma. And sh after a while... I decided not to wear them anymore. And I just ignored it. Ignored the fact that I needed to wear glasses. And then in about 1989, so this was 85, 1989, I went to, yeah, I had my eyes tested for the first time as an adult on my own. And they gave me glasses for reading didn't need them for anything else just reading so I remember getting them and being able to read properly for the first time in ages like being able to see the see the the words without struggling because I guess I didn't know I was struggling I was just so used to it that this was really it was nice and then I went through a period of time when I was wearing glasses at work because I was getting eye strain so I found that when I wore the glasses I didn't get so much eye strain but then I still you know as time went by I was getting glasses for reading and throughout the you know right the way up till about oh, 2013 2012 perhaps and I so I was still wearing glasses for reading. I used to wear them during my counselling sessions because I found, I mean, maybe I was using it as a barrier, you know, like a self-protection emotional barrier or something. But I found that I could, I was getting eye strain because they were the other side of the room. Uh, not eye strain, they were just, yeah, I felt better wearing them. And... I started wearing them, looking at computers uh, when I was working, and I went to the the opticians. It, it might have been two thousand thirteen, and I was told that I needed to wear glasses all the time. Uh, you know, apart from when I'm in bed. What about bath? Well, no, not bath either. What about shower? Not not shower either. What about when I'm swimming? Not even when you're swimming. What about when I'm in space? No. What? It's like, just go. Leave. So I left. But I've got the glasses. I've been wearing glasses full time. <laughs> it's no longer a hobby. It's now a full time job. Since 2013. So I was 42. So for the first, from 15 to 42, actually 19 to 42 really, I was wearing, regularly wearing glasses for reading. And then from 42, so the last 12 years, I've been wearing glasses all the time. And 
each time I get checked or get, you know, my eyesight has unfortunately deteriorated. I and mean, I can tell because I test my eyesight quite a lot and I'm amazed. If someone's more than six foot away from me, without my glasses, I can see them. I can see who they are. Or it's six foot, maybe ten, ten foot, eight foot, I don't know. But I can't, they're not clear. They're fuzzy. I mean, I'm trying to think of something to give you an idea. Okay, so I've got the, <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to, um... oh, I've got an idea, okay, right. On the wall, I've got bills and stuff that I've, you know, I've written down, so I can see it. It's big, quite big writing, um, you know, first of the month, TV license, council tax, all stuff like that. So I can see what it says. And with my glasses, without my glasses, it's bills for the month, there's TV license, there's a council tax. I can't see it, I just remember it. It's literally, if I walked in there without my glasses on and I sat down and you said, what does it say there? I wouldn't know. I can make out the word bills. Again, it's just fuzzy. But the bits where it says um, TV license <laughs> TV license, and council tax, complete blur. So, yeah, um, it, it is. I mean, I've got a big TV now, and I need a big TV. It's not even a luxury. It was a luxury when I bought it a few years ago. Because, you know, I got it, paid for it monthly for however long it took. And it was the first thing I'd really got myself. You know, if the be probably the only thing I've really spent that, I've, that I got that I, that I liked. Because I don't really spend money on clothes or anything like that. And most of the money I've ever had has gone on to helping to provide this free service over the years, over the last 19 years or whatever, uh, you know, equipment and stuff. But I tell you what, I need a big TV. I, just, I couldn't see the little TV anymore. And the little TV wasn't little, it wasn't like tiny. But if there was any sub, excuse me, if there was any subtitles, could not see anything and I noticed how I went from being able to see the subtitles to struggling to see the subtitles to it just being a blur I thought there was something wrong with the telly not my eyes I just I it's a telly and then I started looking at the trees and the trees are something wrong with the trees they're not as clear as they used to be <laughs> I can't see number plates I tell you how how bad it is. Not bad, but because to me it's not a big deal. It's just it is what it is. You know, I'm perfect in so many other ways. <laughs> it's it's just eyesight. I mean, I, it's precious. Don't get me wrong. I I know it's precious, and I hope to keep on to, on on it. You know, keep it with me as long as I can, and hopefully, f you know, for forever. But at the end of it, it's like, well, some things you just have to accept. So my eyesight isn't as... It's not like I was born having to wear glasses. Some people have glasses from, like, as soon as they're born. Uh, so at least, I've you know, I've experienced um, time without glasses, so I know what it's like for both. And I don't mind either. In fact, I think glasses probably... I don't know, I'm comfortable wearing glasses, I'm fine. For me, it's my, the way my, my brain thinks. My glasses are my Clark Kent look. You know, it's like Clark Kent wore glasses. If Superman can wear glasses, I can wear glasses. That's how I see things. If he can wear tights in public with his underpants on the outside, so can I. And I realised... You know, that what what I noticed though is when I knew my eyesight was really deteriorating, this is the, before I got these glasses. 
is I felt I went out one day without my glasses. That's it. I left my glasses at home. I don't know how it happened, but I just did. Or I brought the wrong ones out. I brought the ones with the, the reading ones or whatever. That's when I had both at that time. And I was waiting for a bus, but there was multiple buses come past the bus stop. So I, I had to obviously see which bus was going my way. I could not see the number of the bus. And the numbers on buses are big. You know, the, at the front of the bus. It's big. Buses aren't little, are they? I could see the bus, but I could not see the number until it was literally stopped. So I had to stop every bus. And what I did, even though I could see it was a wrong number, I asked anyway, oh, do you go to town? And they'd say, no, go away. So I said, oh, sorry. Because otherwise I'd stop them for no reason. So I had to stop about three buses until the right bus stopped. That's when I realised. In fact, coming back, I, <laughs> I had to ask someone, um, like this really elderly lady with glasses on, I had to ask her if it's the right bus, what number it was. She looked at me like it was, I think, like I was weird. But I just couldn't see, I couldn't see the number. It's never really experienced that before. So, I don't know what it is. But if it is the old... Uh, I mean, it's all right with glasses. I mean, it, I don't care if I have to have really... Th I don't think the thick ones really exist anymore. I think they've got the lenses are quite good now, so they can be strong. I don't think I've got super strong glasses. But I've noticed recently that if I spend too much time looking at the computer screen that I do get uh, a side effect from that either in my eyes or in my head so I'm going to need to do something about that I think you can get screen covers that help with that and I will look at getting some glasses that will help with that as well because I need to, need to start looking after my eyes a bit better but yeah, so that's it really, I've not really talked about anything today have I, even though I have been talking for about 17 hours, do you want to hear about the naturist club, <laughs> okay, okay, it's not rude, nothing rude here. So I'm not going to explain what a naturist, if you, I'm going to assume you know what it is. So I don't, I'm not actually going to specifically say what it was uh, or what it is, okay? So I walk into this place. And it's just, you know, always a little bit like, oh... I could have said massage there was a sign massage outside and I wanted to make sure it was genuine because you know otherwise I might not have enough money on me no I wanted to make sure <laughs> I want to make sure it's a genuine place because I was going there for a genuine reason because of my back and I thought that it might it might be useful it might, might help to loosen my back up a bit so, I thought, yeah, and so I go in there, and they said, oh, you can come back, uh, yeah, you can come back, I think they were, they were, cl they weren't open to the public or something at the moment, but they said, come back tomorrow and whatever, you can book you an appointment with a, um, he said hypnotist there with a massa so okay cool and so I went back but they had a bar and everything and I you know I was like oh okay didn't know health spas had bars so I go back and a lady says well I'll show you around um, the facilities so okay so I I go and 
get on to if you want to get uh, your swimming costume on or whatever because I'll show you the, the jacuzzi and the whatever so I said oh, okay so oh. I was again I had but well, you get a dressing gown there so if you, you can cover up don't worry and I said I well I wasn't worried but thanks now now I am so I, I get dressed or get undressed put my dressing gown on I had a locker put all my stuff in my locker come out and the lady who was talking to me she said are you ready I said yeah so I said well, if you just go in if you go it's a jacuzzi if you want to get in I'll come in I'll join you and I'll talk tell you about everything so I did that so I get in there literally a couple of minutes later I see her step into the jacuzzi and she has bikini bottoms on well that's it and it was very I don't want to use the word hard difficult it was very very strange because you know I was I mean back then I was what 27 so I was you know I was I still had hormones at that point and it was I was like I was confused but it was a genuine place. It was. And I said, "What? Why? What?" I, I struggled to talk, to be honest with you. Um, the hardest part, she was telling me about the jacuzzi. It gets cleaned regularly. There's a shower. There's a a sauna, and um, they have special events. And she said, "It. You, you don't know if you realised." Um, or those naked men. <laughs> no, you know, it's it's a uh, yeah, a naturist club. I said okay. She said we have parties here. We have uh, weekends and uh, Sundays. It's like we have bar not barbecue like buffets, which is our ir ironic buff in the buff buffets. That's what we call being naked in this country, if you're in the buff. So I had buffets there on a Sunday. Sandwiches and turkey sandwiches and stuff. Every day's Christmas. And they and, and the hardest part, again, I don't really want to use that word, but was when she stood up and said, shall I show you the, shall I show you the sauna? And I said, uh, well, right now, she said, she said, yeah. So she's standing there looking at me, and I'm I'm in the jacuzzi. She said, I'll show you the sauna. There's no one in there at the moment, so I can show you in there. Because, you know, don't, there was more than one sauna, but it didn't like to disturb people that were in there. Um, like non-members, that is. Because I wasn't like an official member at this point. And I said... Uh, I didn't really know how to, um, I said, I'm all right here. I'm okay here, actually. She said, would you want to, what, you want to stay in here for a little bit longer? I said, yeah, it, it's going to take a while. I mean, she said, what? I said, well, I'm, I'm going to need a little bit longer. You're going to need a little bit longer? I mean, it's, it's so relaxing. Ooh, relaxing. I wish all of me was relaxed. And she said, like, oh, okay. In the end, I managed to... <laughs> I managed... Uh, I had a trick. What I used to do is, whenever I wanted to um, undo what was happening, I just used to think of my girlfriend. <laughs> a joke, a joke. I didn't have a girlfriend. Um, so... So I, so she showed me the, the what's it? I couldn't get past the fact of well, just I couldn't get past what was happening. You know, she showed me the sauna. I don't remember anything about that. Uh, and then I went and had my. I went and waited for a massage. I couldn't believe like they were all behind the counter. But they weren't like that when I came in the first time. And. 
it was it was when I came back out of the out of you know the jacuzzi and the sauna, there was a I think two men just sitting on a lounger, um, sharing what perhaps they shouldn't share, letting everyone see what nobody ever wanted to see, <laughs> perhaps. And that was yeah, that was like, huh? What's going on here? Um, I'll be honest though. When I when I saw when I saw some of them in there, I thought I was worried it's going to drop off. I was a little bit disturbed, but I had me I had me massage. I waited for massage. The massage was completely professional. Uh, I mean, professional as in they were dressed completely, fully dressed like a masseur is, and I, I did study massage for a while, so I kind of know a little bit about that. And it was such, it was almost like going into a different world. Going upstairs to normality, keep myself covered, having a massage, and then coming back downstairs to. Uh, I don't know what to call it. Oh, it's just, I'm not a prude. I just, I just hadn't, I haven't seen a lot. I just, just, yeah. Don't have the words even now. Now, I wasn't completely horrified because I went back. <laughs> now, the 15th time I went, the, the I'm never coming back here again, ever. Now, the next time I was there, the... So I had, I went back a few times for massages. And it was helping my back. It was. I don't know. I might have pulled something. I don't know. That sounds wrong. But yeah. Um, anyway. The last time I was there. I was getting changed. And I was just in there. Getting putting my clothes on. There was no one else around in the changing room. It was a big old changing room. And I was just putting my stuff on. And I was just walking... To, I was not far from the door and I'm just walking to the door and I hear a voice behind me say hello I turn around and there's someone I've never seen before and she was like a mermaid but without a tail uh, if that makes sense it, it was and I went up and chatted to her of course but I just like didn't know where to look. But she was lovely. She was really friendly, and I was all confused again because I didn't know she's talking to me because uh, she liked me or she wanted to get to know me or she was just being friendly. I didn't know. I couldn't figure it out because she was she was. Um, I've had really, really, even the best dates haven't gone as well as that went before I'd even spoken to her. You know, it's like, what would you do now? Everything's all set in place. It's almost just, we should be getting married now. It was weird, but I, re I didn't go back. And I don't remember why, I think... I don't know, I think, I didn't feel very comfortable with all the men that were laying around, because there wasn't many women around. The staff were women, but there was no, it was just seemed to be a lot of men. I don't know, I just didn't feel, just didn't feel comfortable there for some, I'm not really sure why. Wasn't I didn't feel very relaxed, because uh, I was wearing my dressing gown and, chastity belt and stuff you know just and they I think I might have made them feel a little bit uneasy because they were going there to feel free and relaxed and seeing me sit there with my duffel coat on and sleeping bag and you know seven pairs of shoes it probably 
unrelaxed them a little bit. You know, they weren't really enjoying themselves as much as they wanted to. But yeah, I had a real kind of a moment with that lady. Not the one that got into the jacuzzi with me. That just confused me flat out. Didn't know. I don't even know how I talked. Don't know how I even managed to have a conversation with her. Because it was just on a just really absolutely didn't see that coming. Excuse the, you know, I did. I just didn't. I didn't know that was going to happen. And I didn't even know places like that existed. And it wasn't anything seedy. It was just. It was just naturist. They were just happy. They wanted to be, as I guess they were born. You know if you know what I mean I just wanted to be free and I've never felt that way about my body <laughs> I've never I never looked at myself in the mirror and thought more people need to see this <laughs> complete strangers need to see this body now in public you know I've never thought that you know there's a lot of people missing out no ne not never have I thought that when I've looked in the mirror at myself so, yeah, that was the story of that place. Yeah, I think I might have missed out on potential romance. I mean, it's a strange way to meet someone, but the lady in the in the the, the dressing room, she she was lovely. She was like really friendly. We were chatting. And I was able to hold a conversation with her, but it was also at the same time surreal. And yeah, it was very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, it's. It, yeah, it was it was a strange, strange, strange one. It was kind of like bye then and we were both saying goodbye, but. It, I got a sense that neither of us wanted to say goodbye. But I might have just been looking more into it than... But, you know, back then I was a lot younger. I was a lot fitter. I was, you know, didn't have an ounce of fat on me back then. I was... You know, maybe I was... I was a, not as much of a catch as I am now, you know. <laughs> Oh dear. <sighs> la, 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 la. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. I'm going to take the Vinster out into the park and then I'm going to come back and in the next couple of hours I'm going to edit this and upload it. So it's uh, done. And then I will continue to work on the website and the, the podcasts, you know, the five and ten hours without music. But until tomorrow, I intend to make another one tomorrow, which is Thursday, and then I'll do the Q&A Friday on Friday. I want to try and get back to being a bit more regular so thank you for listening remember remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy remember to be gentle with yourself lots of love bye Relax in a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed 
at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find. Like some people do. And myself as well. I Sometimes I find one particular recording. That really. Resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from... We're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualisation. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was the person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful, and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players press the play button in fact it might have even been a tape tape recorder I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized, really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down now now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself 
because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew. I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade maybe not solidly obviously not 24 hours a day but maybe people come back some people maybe listen every day and something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze, even though they're may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now and as you become aware of your hands I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now and when it comes to potentially drifting off to sleep which may be the reason you're listening. I all 
also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. And it's only when I listen back to do the editing I hear snoring and I think I don't remember snoring I remember talking was it snoring or was a pig turned up that's what I sound like when I snore And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed. you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes it's almost like that additional Muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. Without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice the ease in which You breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly.
whenever I imagine my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed. I tend to visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity, with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. Peaceful. Completely. Unattached. To any thought. Whatsoever in this moment, completely free. Noticing that your mind has 
slowed down. Slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders, Deepen in each part of your body further and deeper and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings. 
feels in your wrists. muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling Peaceful. Deeply. There's a sense of peace. spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. Relaxing. Very slow. Your stomach. Peaceful in your stomach. Your back. Notice. 
Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. All the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go.
peace. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
might have noticed your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. to peace. Go.
body feels almost invisible. you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort. 
comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it, becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my 
voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth. Relaxing, calm and loose as you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm. Focus in. the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck, relaxed and loose. Focusing on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release you can experience in the back of your neck, moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back, as 
some muscles in the top of your back. Relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. that spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine, Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And that feeling. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. The feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders, that sense of relaxation, not just travelling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. Healing and you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message.
into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So, so calm. spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and gentle now on your hands a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
fingertips. to the front of your body, so comfortable, muscles in your thighs, your knees, Muscles and your shins completely
watching of, of everything. So I'm going to start counting down now. From 20 down to 1. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. Further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
and you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, to focus in on your eyes. You'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may find sleep. And if that's what you want, then just allow yourself to do that. Now, focus in on your eyes. I'm going to begin counting down from ten to one. Right now. Ten.
Whoa. So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, and you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down or just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. gives you that distance, that space, now, ten, nine, Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now but just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area, very strong, probably the strongest muscles in your body or in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. seem will sound really weird but I think that all of our body parts especially our thighs need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. It's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. If you move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily... I'll speak for myself here. I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a, maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason, it's then that I realise how much it does benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, Regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, your shins and your calf muscles, 
muscles of the bones between your knees and feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. head even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. <laughs> when I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realize now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. It's all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your, your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. It's very, it feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. as you go down to your calf muscles now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles massaging every single tissue of that muscle healing every part The same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. Because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And then when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective sound a bit a bit silly to start with the idea of having
any love he lives, showing appreciation, he advise, wanting to be able to put your hands in the thighs, massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all attention, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles, the strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are, truly a gift, because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight Regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. <laughs> In fact, my whole legs do. My feet do also go. And my toes clap. I'm so happy. And I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably, possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven. I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five, As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body, you may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more your 
mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even, even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, is still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. You know, maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each muscle.
nosso e no meu poder. Just observing the sensation of letting go. your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful Two. is slowed right down, sinking deeply into relaxation. As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are 
there's some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more Starting with number seven.
changing now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. I'm going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands, your fingers. There's nothing needed to be done. There's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels. And you may have already noticed Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands
starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Just 
generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now, you're left with a real sense of peacefulness. which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where Everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself who you are, a place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever, a place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. And that sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins. Traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. Spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past 
for some reason no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing, continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's 
very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. And you can just say stop. will 
turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't des- doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. doesn't it, to just let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty.
this is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on the body getting in touch with. Physically, 